It all started on a silent night. Heaven invaded earth. We call it Christmas. We outdo each other in lighting up our homes. We go shopping. We ask our kids to show us what they want for Christmas. And uh, we buy each other presents we don't really need, like a pink bunny outfit or a beer belly fanny pack or a mankini. Don't look. Oh, it's safe. You, you can look. Uh, we send out Christmas cards that say, chilling with my no means. <laughs> we dress our pets in Santa outfits. Uh, we hang wreaths and wear ugly sweaters. We watch cute seasonal cartoons and movies. We fill our houses with twerking Santa toys. I know you do. <laughs> we do all that, and we call it Christmas. But really, heaven was invading earth. And it all started on a silent night. It was like God ambushed the world with his love. You, you know what an ambush is, right? It's, it's to make a surprise attack on someone from a concealed position. It's like God had been there all along, right? Heaven, always there, but concealed. And, and then, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Surprise! And even though God had promised for centuries that he would send a savior, still no one saw it coming. It was a surprise attack. Because of his love for us, God came for us. Heaven invaded earth. Jesus came to ambush God's world with his love. Jesus was born in the little town of Bethlehem in a barn. And from that concealed position, he loved. He loved everyone. He loved people no one else would love. He loved people who were hard to love, which, which means that I think he'd love me because I can be hard to love. From that concealed position, he loved always. He he loved uh, with encouraging words. He loved by meeting people's needs, like, like uh, food to the hungry. He loved by touching the untouchable, by showing uh, grace to people who were guilty, living in shame. Heaven invaded earth. And because of Jesus' love, earth was made a little more like heaven. And he didn't stop back then. I mean, he, he is still doing the same thing today. And in fact, that, that's what he did for me. Jesus invaded my life. I had uh, never gone to church, knew nothing about God, had no interest in Jesus. But then God ambushed me. He, he sent Jesus into my life and, and I couldn't believe that God loved me. And I, I realized he was inviting me into relationship with him, into heaven one day. And I said, yes. And I understood it wasn't just that God wanted to bring me to heaven one day. He wanted me to bring heaven to earth today. We, we are to bring heaven to earth today. To, to, to do for others what he did for us, to, to ambush them with the love of God that's changed our lives. God tells us that's his mission for people who, uh, who experience and say yes to his love. And eventually, understanding that led me out of law school and, and into ministry because <laughs> I just wanted to help people know that they're loved by Jesus and, and help them to, to live and love like Jesus, to, to understand that what he did, we're to do. Jesus, Jesus came so heaven could invade earth and we are to bring heaven to earth. I wanted to help people understand that because it's so amazing. I mean, do you get that? 
Christianity is not about us being good enough to go to heaven. It's about us being loved enough that we bring heaven to earth. You've actually probably prayed that. So, so growing up, I didn't go to church, so, so I didn't. In fact, most of the people who come to Verve have like little to no church background, little to no uh, faith when they, they first show up at, at Verve. And so maybe you didn't, but some of you prayed the Lord's Prayer. You remember, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And in the middle of that prayer, you said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which are words from Jesus when he taught how to pray. But what, what does that mean? Some of you are like, huh, I said it like a thousand times and I don't really know what it means. Well, it's, it's praying for God to help you bring heaven to earth. That's what Jesus did. For God so loved the world, he sent Jesus. God sent Jesus in love to the world, to, to love the world. And then, check this, Jesus sent us. He said, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Jesus came to ambush the world with God's love, and he's sending us out to ambush the world with God's love. I mean, that, that's what this is all about, being loved with God's love and, and then going out with God's love. That's what the church is to do. That, that's why I love the church. That's why I've given my life to this. I started a church in Virginia Beach and, and then this one in Las Vegas, and, and both our goal has been to be loved and to love. In Virginia Beach, we tried to uh, inspire our people to do this by giving them what we called guerrilla lover assignments. But we, we later realized that saying guerrilla lover maybe caused some confusion. It made people think of, and, well, you know, like, and, but, uh, we, we told our people we were going to be guerrilla lovers and we're going to do guerrilla lover assignments. Maybe calling them love ambushes would have been better. Anyway, uh, we handed everyone a sealed envelope on their way into our service. At the end of the service, we explained that these were guerrilla lover assignments for them to complete in the next week. Well, this led to an outbreak uh, of people ordering pizzas for their neighbors and dropping cookies off at fire departments and mowing lawns for old ladies in the neighborhood and, and, and uh, buying lunch for the person behind them in the drive-thru, uh, cleaning the, the bathroom at their office, even though it wasn't their responsibility, and um, tipping the dishwasher in the restaurant. And, and our people loved it. They had so much fun doing it. But one of those people was Becky Riley. Uh, Becky's mother was a Wiccan witch, not a wicked witch. I'll get you my pretty in your little dog too. Not one of those, uh, a Wiccan witch, a witch involved in Wicca. So Becky grew up Wiccan. Uh, she's now in her 20s, uh, but still thought of herself as Wiccan. But she had a friend who, who just kept lovingly inviting her to our church. Finally, after a bunch of invitations, Becky, Becky finally decides, okay, I'll go. She told me later, partly because she thought it was kind of a cool way to rebel against her mother, which is kind of funny. Uh, so Becky comes to our church, realizes that she is loved. She's loved by God, and, and her life is changed, and, and she wants to share that with others. She, she wants the, the people she works with to, to, to come to our church and to experience God's love and, and have their lives change. But she, she finds it kind of hard to invite them. And, and when she does, it doesn't seem like they're very receptive. And then we started doing these gorilla lover assignments. Uh, Becky got a card that said, make cookies for a public worker. So Becky decided to make cookies for her garbage man. She got up really early one morning that week. She made a big batch of uh, chocolate chip cookies. And then she stood by her door waiting for him to drive up. And she, uh, she told me later, she thought, what am I doing? 
this is crazy. I don't, I don't think I'm going to have the nerve to walk out of my house, run out to the truck, and I, I think I'm not going to do this. And then she had the thought, well, maybe I need to get closer so it's, it's like quicker to get there. So she goes out and she sits in her car, cookies in her lap. Uh, she told me later, she said, I was so nervous that someone would see me. So I slid way down in my car. She's in her concealed position. Finally, the garbage truck pulled up. Becky sprang out of the car, uh, ran over, knocked on the door, and when he rolled down the window, uh, Becky held out the cookies and said, hi, I made you cookies. The garbage man was confused. He said, these are for me? You made these for me? She said, yeah, um, I just made them. They're fresh out of the oven. Uh, they're, they're warm. I, th- I think they're pretty good. He said, I don't understand. For me? I've been doing this job for 17 years, and uh, no one's ever done anything for me. I just, I don't, they're, they're for me, and they're for you. I can't wait. I can't wait to tell. And he actually starts crying. And, and finally, he, he looks at Becky and he says, why? Why did you do this? And Becky said, she wasn't sure how to answer that. She, she just, she wasn't prepared for him to ask her that question. And, and so she just said the first thing that came to mind. She looked at him and she said, um, I'm a gorilla lover. <laughs> oh man, I love that. I wish I could have been there to see his face. I'm a gorilla lover. So funny, but so beautiful, right? I love how Becky's life had been ambushed by God's love and how she was going out and ambushing people with God's love. And that's why we started this church. We wanted Verve to be a place where you are loved with God's love, where you realize God is head over heels in love with you. And then you go out with God's love where we bring heaven to earth. And man, we've been doing that. We've been trying to do that for for almost 12 years now. And just in this past year or so, um, we've offered free COVID testing at Verve. Um, We did a a really amazing uh, drive-through food distribution, gave out like thousands of pounds of food. Um, We we gave out food and all kinds of supplies at Marble Manor, which is the housing project we adopted. Uh, We've got like a teen center there. Um, we, we gave out on Easter, we gave out your awesome boxes and, uh, and you all filled them and then gave them to people you wanted to bless. Um, uh, just this summer, we, we sponsored uh, 28 more kids, uh, now well over 100, who are living in poverty in Ecuador through Compassion International. Uh, uh, through, through our partnership with Cup of Hope, we've helped the homeless all kinds of stuff. And then uh, last month, we did our Love Vegas Day. But we had people all over serving Las Vegas. It was so great. In fact, uh, we got a little highlight video just so you can see some of what we did.
we've also been doing uh, what we've been calling love ambushes, where we take the first dollar of every offering we receive, and we give those collected dollars, all that money, to someone in need or uh, to an organization doing something really good in, in the community. And today, we're going to give you a love ambush assignment because we have been loved with God's love. We should share it. We should ambush people with God's love. We bring heaven to earth. Uh, if you want to do this, and man, I hope you'll do this, uh, you can get your assignment by texting the word love, L-O-V-E, to 702-905-1559. Text the word love to 702-905-1559 and you will receive in a text message re reply uh, your love ambush assignment. I, I get it that you might be a little nervous to, to do whatever it is that you're going to be asked to do, but I'll tell you this, um, you'll be so glad you did it. It's, it's going to be uh, such a meaningful thing in your life and it's going to be fun. And uh, to, to encourage each other, we, we want to share the fun. Uh, like, let's do this together as a community, right? We're better together. And so when you do your assignment, you don't have to, but maybe consider taking a picture of what you did or, or you know, it, while you're doing it or whatever, or uh, maybe a video if you can, either like you can make a quick video of yourself doing it if it's something you can video, or maybe after you do it, you'll take a little selfie video and just say, hey, here's what I just did. Uh, and then you take that picture or you take that video and put it on your social media, which will be cool for other people to, to see what's going on here. Um, and uh, so whatever, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. And, and then tag us at Ver Vegas, at Ver Vegas, and then hashtag it with hashtag Verve Love Ambush. Uh, and so that way we'll get to see each other's and we can kind of follow that, that hashtag and uh, get to just, it'll just be fun getting to see what all happens. Uh, in January, we're going to share one of yours each week in our uh, new series that we're starting. And so we'll get to highlight a few of them just to, again, just to celebrate like the cool things that we were able to do. And um, we're, we're going to have one week where we'll probably show a couple more than one. Uh, so man, come back uh, to see what's going to happen with this in January. So our staff has actually gotten the ball rolling this last week or so. And so um, just to give you a little inspiration, a little idea of what this could look like, check this out. I think we all want to live this way, but you might feel like, um, like it's beyond you. Like, you know, we're, we're going to ambush people with love, but I just don't have that much love to give. Well, personally, I would say you're right. You're right. But, but there is a secret to living this kind of life. Uh, the Bible tells us in the book of first John chapter four, verse 19, it says, we love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. The idea is, if you let yourself be loved by God, if you learn to live your life in his love, you'll have his love to give. That's, uh, that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in the new teaching series we're starting in January, how to live your life in God's love habits that we can build into our lives that allow us to be filled with God's love on a daily basis. Man, I hope you'll come back for that series because we, we want to live this way, right? We want to live and love like Jesus. Living life this way gives your life purpose and adventure and fun. And more, more important, it's the mission that God's given to you to bring heaven to earth, to ambush people with his love. And it turns out when we do that, it's contagious.
contagious. Love is contagious. You, you remember Becky Riley who, uh, who made the cookies for the garbage man? I'm a gorilla lover. <laughs> Let me tell you the rest of her story. Uh, Becky told me that, man, she, she just couldn't like wipe the smile off of her face uh, all day that, that after that morning of giving the garbage man the cookies. And, and people at work kept asking her, hey, what's going on? Like, what are you so happy about? What's, what, what's going on? And at first she said, nothing. She, she later told me, she's like, I thought we weren't allowed to tell people, which we had never said that, but she's like, nothing, you wouldn't understand. But finally people kept asking and, uh, and they got it out of her. She explained, uh, we're doing this thing at my church. It's love, it's a grill lover assignments. And, and so we're just trying to ambush people with God's love. And so I got made cookies for a public worker. I was garbage man. And so I made, I made my cookies and this morning. I got up early and I was tired and I was nervous, but I ran out. I gave him the cookies and he cried. He cried. I, I gave him the cookies. He was so moved. He, was so, he, he cried. I think it was the coolest thing I've ever done. It was just so amazing. I, I, that's why I'm, and, and one coworker kind of pulled her aside uh, later and said, hey, could I please come to church with you this Sunday? Becky was shocked because she had asked her several times and she had never come. And she said, sure, why? Why do you want to come now? And her coworker said, I, I don't know. I, I just want to be a part of something like that. Becky said, sure. Her coworker joined her that Sunday. The next week, person after person in her office kept coming up to Becky and saying, hey, I heard how great your church was. I heard about, you know, she went. She said it was so cool and different. And, and the following Sunday, Becky had an entire row of coworkers sitting with her at church. See? Love is contagious. People are drawn to God's love, and we get to share it. Let's share it. Let's do this. That, that, that's what this season is supposed to be all about. I mean, we, we call it Christmas, but heaven invaded earth 